Hello everyone. So um, I decided to create this um, video um, to show people how to properly use and navigate through Sierra Shards. Um, I've been using Sierra um, for about three months um, since August. So um, I really got my way around it already. I uh, know a lot of things. There's still a lot of things you could do with uh, Sierra Shards that I still don't know how to, um, like um, custom stories and things like that. Um, there's some coding that you could do on your own to um, do uh, make the program do certain things for you or auto automate the program itself. Um, so those kind of things um, are more in depth. So I haven't gone into it yet. Um, also, I'm not a really good uh, at coding. I tried that in college, didn't go so well. So, um, so anyway, so I'm just creating this for those people that have tried uh, or that are using Sierra Shards, but they still haven't been able to get really around it and how to work through and navigate through it. Um, so, through this uh, video, I'm gonna try to split it into sessions as I go and I will tell you what I'm going uh, to start explaining uh, before I start so that way it's easier for you to understand and to find um, the content that you're looking for within the video. So starting I'm gonna go through the navigation um, process like how to scroll up and down and sideways um, you know how to expand the uh, charts that you have in front of you and so on and so forth so starting with the scrolling um, what you have to do is let's say I'm on a laptop right now so it's really easy the way I have it set up to just scroll up and down this way um, but on a desktop I believe it's a little bit different but the same settings work so I'm gonna show you if you go to um, your global settings and then general settings right here and then you go to general two right up here so this bottom section right here are your options on how you want the screen to scroll i have it set up on the third option right here uh scroll wheel uh scrolls vertical scale and with a shift when you're holding shift and scrolling um you're gonna change the spacing so I already have it set up that way so you can see I'm just scrolling up and down on my mouse track um, on my trackpad and then moving sideways here on the trackpad so it's really easy I don't have to necessarily do this like dragging the bar at the bottom um, or this but you could do it if you want to but I don't have to I prefer just using the trackpad now if you're on a desktop computer then you will have to obviously use your mouse click and move this way up and down and then use this like that using the bottom bar um, for the spacing so you see how my dates in my profiles are um, widespread so if you want to like just be together so let's say you want a bird view of the whole chart then you could just click and drag on the date uh, bar at the bottom the date and time um, and then just move out if you want to pretty much zoom out again um, and then for for the price for the price bar so you just have to hold down shift well, in my case, for some reason, it's the control key, not shift. So you hold down the control key and click and drag the price bar. So it'll move up and down like this. Um, so that's that option on how to make the screen move up and down and sideways and how to expand the view on the screen again um control and then i'm sorry control and then you 
click and move up and down on the price bar and then here on the date bar you just have to click and drag sideways um so then i'm gonna go back to the global settings and i'm gonna show you um a simple um option here so you know when you open sierra you have to go and go to file and then open your chart books one by one how many you have um but in when you go to global settings and then general settings on the general one tab um there's this option right here so files to open on startup so let's say if you want um your charts to open up then you just go and click add and then you choose whichever charts you want and then just click open so say I don't have this one there, so say click open and then make obviously you gotta make sure that this right here is enabled. Uh it has the check mark. I'm gonna remove it because I don't need this one right now. But uh, make sure you, you just add the ones you want to open as so as soon as you click uh on your Sierra chart icon, um these chart books are start gonna start loading as well. And then just click apply and okay. So I'm going to show you real quick. I'll just close here. Um, and when you click, it's going to come up and then it's going to show you the, uh, the charts opening up. Just like that. So I have three chart books opening. I just obviously just got to wait for them to load like normal it's gonna finish up downloading the data and then you're set to go um up next i'm gonna show you how to um how to open and collapse your tpos so let me expand this a little bit so you see how this TPO, this is the one that's uh, currently uh, trading. Um, this is the overnight uh, TPO from last night. So right now it's collapsed. This one right here, it's open. So if I want to open just to see some of the levels, for example, uh, then you right click on the TPO itself. And then you go here where it says letter blocks in own column. And it'll collapse here you right click again same option letters or blocks in its own column and it'll open up like that um, if you want to let's say for whatever reason you want to open up all the TPOs so this second option right here when you like right click anywhere in your chart um, and you click the uh, second option so it says letter blocks in all column all profiles so all the profiles are gonna open up so if you scroll you see they're all open and then um, say if you don't want them like that just right click anywhere on the chart and click on the same option letter blocks in all columns or profile so this is just an update that it does on its own just wait for it to finish and you can just close it um, so that's that. Let me see if there's anything else here. Yeah, so I'm going to show you pretty much what you could do with, um, when you right click on the chart, um, different things you could do. So I'm going to open up this TPO. Um, and let's say for whatever reason you want to see the volume on just this time period right here end period from yesterday so you right click on the period itself and then you're gonna click a split profile here and then you see how it shows you just that one period separated from the rest of the tpo and then you can see um you can see the 
volume on each of this uh, period and that's the total volume for the whole period right up here. Um, I'll show you later on how to set this up also, most likely at the end. Um, if you just want to put it right back to uh, with the rest of the TPO, uh, then merge with prior profile, that option right here, and then it goes right back in. Um, I don't use um, the other options because obviously I don't, I've only used these this first four options. Uh, these other options, you could just merge two TPOs together or like let's say if I open this period, uh, I split it. And if I go merge with next profile, it's going to merge it with the uh, click see on top of the overnight. So, I mean, I don't see a use for it. Uh, you see how it shows the volume for that um, period right there. Um, I don't see a use for it, like I said, so I don't bother with those. Um, so, merge with prior profile because you want it back with the profile that it was with. Um, hold on, I just messed this up. Sorry. Right click, that's why I don't use these things because I don't really see a use for it um, as of now. Oh, come on. Split. There you go. Oh, I did this right here. So I have to click on the A itself and split. There you go. So I'm going to. Close this profiles. Sorry. I mean, that's essentially what you could do when you right click there. Um, these other things are a few other things you could do. Um, so I'll show you that later because these are most of these are part of the other settings and also the tools. Um, these right here are part of the trading options, so I'll show you how to enable that as well. Um, this one right here, this bottom option, exclude evening session profiles. So if you click on that, um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna add. I had it, I had it turned off. So right now, it just added the overnight session through my whole chart. So if I scroll back, you see this one is from 918. So that's the overnight session. Uh, if I go back from um, 1118, I mean 1117, I'm sorry. Uh, that's the other overnight session. Um, I really rarely use that option, but you know, that's, that's there just in case you're wondering why can't I see the overnight? I could only see one overnight. Um, that's usually a question that some of us have when we first start using Sierra. So uh, just go back, right click again anywhere in the chart, uh, exclude evening session profiles, and oh, it's on me back down. You see how it just did this on its own. So I got to expand, remember, control and drag here. All right. Um, also, some of these key options, I think the reason why my control key is the one instead of the shift, I changed it because um, you could change the keyboard um, keys and what they do when you click on them. Um, so there is one thing here that somebody in our uh, micro mini room um, discover not too long ago mr andy shout out to andy uh, um if you right click on the price axis right here right click um there's these options right here so it says set x and y constant relationship so when you click on that what it does is if you move one of the x or y axis um, they're gonna move together so like or expand so let's say I want to expand 
And if I do this, it's going to expand all together. So it's going to zoom in. If you want to zoom out, I'm, I'm holding the control key and, you know, just dragging here the time and date um, bar. So it just does the whole thing together. Same thing if I do it here. So the main difference is like, let's say I'm going to turn it off. So if I want to zoom in and out or expand, um, I have to do it on both axes separate. Say like here, it's only doing this up and down and then here. But when you have that on and you do it on one, then it just does it all together. So I guess that's a cool thing that um, Andy discovered uh, not too long ago. We we're talking about some of the Sierra um, settings and then he accidentally clicked on that and discovered that. Uh, there's other things. So I, I don't want to change it because um, this one right here is what I have set up when I, when I showed you in the global settings um, originally about the scrolling option. So I just left it there. I just left it alone. Um, so I I started using this after Andy showed it to me and a few other people in the room. Um, I don't use it all the time. So just when I remember, since it's so new to me. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to move on right now. Let's see. So... I'm sorry, I have some notes, so I'm going through them um, just to make sure I explain everything to you uh, that I know is going to be useful. So these are the basics. So I wanted to start with the basics because I know a lot of people, when they start using Sierra, they have a lot of questions about the scrolling because the default settings are kind of tricky. Uh, obviously, if you don't uh, find it convenient for you, just, you know, like anything, uh, you already know that you could go to general settings and general two. Um, and then if you don't like these settings, they say on your desktop, uh, since it's different than on a laptop, you could try, you could try the other different options, um, and see how that works out for you. You know, just, um, like they say, you could use this and then test it out, try scrolling up and down with your mouse. Um, you know, dragging the Y and X axis and see how that works for you. So just obviously use what you think is uh, more comfortable for yourself. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a new chart book. So when we first started, um, JJ from our room, uh, the micro mini room, um, he gave us some some of his chart books. So this one um, is his, uh, but I customized some things on this one. So I'll show you that later. Like um, some of my levels are already um, auto plotted. So I have them automatically set up through the study. So that's something I'll show you later on um, if interested. Now, let me tell you, JJ, uh, does like setting up the levels manually because it helps him. And I agree, it helps him, you know, remember like where the levels are, uh, why you have that level there and things like that, even though you could still um, add uh, the, you know, the name of the level so you know what it is, um, even when you draw them manually. Uh, but, you know, I prefer everything automatically, so it's just based on preferences. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave these ones open since I have to go through them afterwards, but let's say, let's minimize them then so it'll be easier. Let's say you want uh, to create a new chart book. So there are different ways. You could just go here, new chart book, and then go to file and find symbol um, and then here you have all your if you have 
futures data, you can find all your futures contracts here. Um, if you have futures and equi equities data, then you're going to find all of them here as well. So I only have futures right now. Um, and let's say you want to find this one already came up because I looked for it not too long ago. But let's say you want to find the S&P futures. So it, you don't search for it here. So I'm going to erase this. You search for it right here. So let's put MES, find, next. So it could give you different options. Um, so like if you type ES only, let's say you're looking for the ES, it's, it could come up right here because it says MES, but let's say, I'm gonna close this. Find next. So see, it came over here, but that's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for British pound futures. So next, you're not looking for Bitcoin or the Australian. So you just keep going. So you know the ES is part of the E mini SP. So um, that's ENQ, that's the NASDAQ. This is the mid cap, so that's not what you're looking for. The SP mid cap, you're looking for the E mini. Um, so this one right here. So E mini SP 500 features. Now keep in mind, um, this might look a little different depending on your data uh, provider. So if you have CQG uh, and CME data, then you're gonna get it um, like this is gonna look your your symbol, I'm sorry, your symbol is gonna look like this. Um, but some other brokers, uh, pro their data um, are different. So their symbol might be a little shorter or might be a little longer, like this that you're seeing here as I click on it. So right now we're using the December 2019, that's the, the contract that's running currently. So that's the one that we're gonna pick if you wanna use the ES. Um, if you, I'm just going to click on that one. If you want to use the MES, then you just got to type MES and find the micro and open it up. So, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here. So, you're going to click open intra intraday chart. And then in, just close this. So, it's going to open up like a regular uh, monkey bars, what they call the monkey bars. Um, so let's say you want this as regular candles. Um, so in this case, what you're going to work with is the settings of the chart itself. So you're going to go to chart and chart settings. So there are a few different things you could do here. So the first thing is. Let's say you don't want to use the monkey bars, you want regular candles. Here they call them OHLC bars, um, which means open, high, low, close bars. Uh, let's say you just want regular candlestick bars, you click on it, hit apply, and there you have your candles. Um, this right here, this upper left um, section, um, it's pretty much how many days you want the contract to load when your chart book opens up. So obviously that's going to determine some of the like the speed or time that it's going to take for the chart book to load. Um, so that's obviously if, um, if you don't mind, like when you're trading, if you want to wait a few you know, like a minute or two, you could just put, let's say you want a thousand days to load, um, and it automatically, let's say if you can click apply, then it's gonna start loading up the days. Um, let's see, I think, here, let me see, I think you could change it. Let me move this. Hold on. 
want to see how far back this goes. Uh, one second, daily. So it only went to 2018. So you also have to change the year. Oh, I don't need that many days. So um, let's, say, let's say you want a thousand days. So let's put three years, four years back. So 2019, 2015. Let's do 1,000 days. Um, let's see, it's sometimes a little tricky. Intraday charts, five. So it's asking if you want to re-download the intraday data. We say yes. Let's see if it does it. Um, didn't do it there. All right, let's go to charts, chart settings advanced settings the first um advanced settings so you see how it says continuous contract none um i'm using um this one volume volume based rollover back adjusted so you click on that and then you could change your time zone also so here you change it to the New York uh, time zone. Um, so you can get the data um, on time. This section right here is where you put your time where you are. So let's say if you are central time, so you're 9.30. For me, it's 9.30 because I'm in Eastern time. So whatever time it is, uh, in your state or your country um, that correlates with the 9.30 central time when the uh, market opens. So that's what you're going to put here and here for the um, overnight session. Um, I have this set up to load all the weekend data because obviously we have Sundays um, that we trade starting at 6 p.m. Um, and then again, advanced settings and continuous future contract volume base rollover back adjusted so hit apply and then it's going to start loading so i believe after this it should show me the thousand days so let's see if that works see it okay it's gonna take a while because it has to download all that data um from that we didn't have as you saw, it wasn't showing there. So let's wait for that. All right, so I paused the recording and it's still downloading. It's been about two minutes, it's still downloading. So it's a lot of data. Um, but anyways, so, I, just so you know why I'm doing this, just um, like a small recap. Um, so pretty much when you saw when we opened the chart and candles and I selected the daily uh, candle bars, um, it didn't show like half of it for this year alone. So if you want the contract, like I say, remember when, let's go back here, I'm going to show you real quick. When you go to find a symbol, you see how you have, we're right here on the mini. So you see how this symbol right here is EPU, then you have EPZ and EPH is going to be the next one. So pretty much these um contract started in september i mean ended in september and this one is gonna end uh next month this one ends in march so when this one ends next month we're going to start using this one right here so what happens is if you don't have 
this option um, here if you don't have these options right here um, I mean you have one two three four different options I like this one because it's gonna show me all the data um, with volume and everything um, if I wanted to see volume so um, when you click on that then and it's going to start downloading all the data for all those candles that you know weren't showing um, and then that way you could go back what I was trying to do that it wasn't working at the beginning you could go back and it's gonna um, be able to give you the thousand days or whatever if you just want 300 days um, that's fine um, all of that just keep in mind as you do this see I was decluttering my computer the other day and I you know I mean I knew because it, it, it tells you that it's downloading but just keep in mind that if your computer doesn't have a big hard drive um, a lot of this data that that you download from Sierra it's just storing on your computer. So that's why when you open up your chart, it's easier to load up um, every time you open up your chart books. Because um, obviously if you have to do this every time, it will be tedious. So that's why it downloads to your computer. So when the uh, serial chart opens, it's easier for the software to access the information. So it's programmed to access the information from your hard drive. Um, and it just downloads whatever new data there is for that specific contract so that's why it's doing that so as we wait for this to finish maybe I should have just put 300 days I think I put too many so it's downloading all of that but anyways so um, I'm gonna post this real quick also a, a quick um, uh, disclaimer I should have said at the beginning um, as you know by now I have a little bit of well maybe a big accent um, so I hope you understand what I'm explaining um, if you don't just feel free to you know DM me anytime and I'll be able to explain but um, I'm just I thought I'll just let you know something obvious my friends still and my husband make fun of me from time to time when I say yesterday because I can't pronounce the word correctly so um let's see i'm gonna pause it for a few more minutes and wait for this to finish well all right so this thing's been downloading for a little over five minutes so i'm gonna show you so you know you already know how to create a chart book so let's say you you see how i have these three chart books each of them have different tabs right here at the bottom so as you can see, um, you could create different charts also. But if you go through file here, it doesn't tell you how to create just one chart. It's only talking about chart books. So you don't, you know, you might not want to, every time you want to or create a new chart, you might not want to create different chart books. You just want to have them all together because, you know, it's, more convenient to just go like this or if you're like me I have different um, chart books open and you know they have different things like here I have my internals and here I have you know different other things and charts I also have the internals here I have a bird view um, of the charts and you know JJ's levels and then I got this from um, one of the guys in the micro mini room as well and modified it you know to my likings um, or how it's better to see for me um, and then I just have different tabs at the bottom for the charts so let's say on this chart book that we created oh, finally finished downloading so it's loading up now so let me just show you how that works real quick before I move on 
um, to add more shards. So we're gonna add them and they're gonna show up down here. Just one. All right, so we're back here. So this thing finally loaded. So you know, it, is it started um where he left off i think let me go back here make sure it's on the daily okay now it's on the daily so if we go back here it's showing up to 2017 so before it was only showing till 2018 so 2007 march so 2017 um see 2018 in 2019 so it's showing yeah roughly a thousand days so that that's pretty much how that works uh, for you to be able to roll the contracts so then then this moved but I think you get it now okay so we have this so let's say you want to add another chart right down here another tab so like i say when you go to file it doesn't show you how to open or create a new chart only chart books right so what you do is we're gonna add another chart you're gonna go to file find symbol and let's say we want we want the micro es so find next. Oh, where do you go? Right. So we found it right away. Again, we are um in with the December contract. That's the one that's running right now. So that's the one we want. So just click on it and open intraday chart. Um I know you could use this other um, options I haven't really used them as much but you know you see they're there if you just want to play around with this um, but um, I think I used the historical ones but I don't remember what it does so open intro day let's go with that and then just close that so you see how it has the tab here and then it's just open up that one and this one, let's see how far this one goes. I'm sorry, let me put it on the daily. Downloading some of the data. So it only goes that far because it only has the December contract. Again, if you want to change anything, charts, chart settings. So obviously it's not going to show, here he's saying to show 4,380 days I really wouldn't want to do that so let's say I want 300 days a little less than a year um, and then I want the candle stick bars hit apply and then advanced settings we're gonna ask for the rollover data and I'm going to set it to the New York Stack Exchange time zone. Apply. And then, so when you get this message log, um, usually just let it run because it's just running um, whatever data it's trying to download. And then when it's done, that you see it's not doing anything else, just close it. I don't really pay much attention to it. Um, oh. I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry the micro started back in May so it's not gonna show you anything more than that my bad that is my bad daily that's why it only goes back to May right there that's why sorry so we're right we, we're good there um, so the ES on the other hand obviously then it'll go back whatever how many years you need um yes so the micro started in may so that's why we don't have any more data uh, before may so that's that all right so now we know 
how to have different charts, how to open a chart book, how to open the chart itself. Um, so again, to open a chart, just for a quick recap, file, find symbol, then you find the symbol, open intraday. And then obviously you have to customize whatever else through the chart settings uh, in the main settings or the advanced settings. Um, so I believe about the historic and the intraday, that option there, I think is because say if we go to the five minutes chart, I think it should say intraday. Yeah, that's what it is. So that was my confusion. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to move on now. One quick thing, uh, you do have to keep in mind always. Always, always save your chart book. So let's say if you are working with your TPO and you know you're changing colors, adding lines, price lines, or whatever the case is, always remember to save. I always click save all just to make sure. Uh, that everything saved. I also have a copy of my chart books. So look, like up here, I have a copy of them right here. So that's um, aside from the ones that are saved. So like if you go to open a chart book, um, it's gonna show in this data folder the Sierra data folder um, so I have an extra copy of my desktop so once you're done like say you just created this chart book if you want to save it uh, I don't know what just happened with this I don't know, I'm gonna wait for that for some reason it looks like it's loading something um, so just you know go to file save as and then just navigate to your folder click folder and here i have it on my desktop you could put it like in your documents create a new folder or whatever i just have it on my desktop because it's easier for me to find um if you want to create a new folder for that there whatever um and you click okay so this is gonna show if you have any other chart books there on your desktop. They're gonna show there and then just, you know, type whatever name and then save. Um, so the reason why I can't stress this enough is because if, let's say you add a couple of lines here and there, let's say this, right? And, or you went in, I don't know, you change colors of something and then you don't like it or you realize you made a mistake when you change something on your chart and you go and hit save and then you realize, oh man, I really don't want that or I messed up the chart or, you know, you were messing around trying to figure something out and it just screwed up the whole thing. If you saved it by mistake or you went in and hit close, you know how it always asks you, if you want to save and you hit yes by mistake, um, then there's no going back. So once you change something and you saved it, there is no going back. So you have to have a copy of your chart book. So that way, if you mess up your chart, you can just, oh, yeah, I just let me open my copy. And then just after you open your copy, say open chart book, folder, I go to my desktop. I find mine and click open. Then you go immediately look, immediately to file and save all. Save your chart book again. So it's gonna be on your data folder. Um, so obviously for, if for some reason you change the name just and you, you want them to open automatically or you just created this new chart book and you saved and you want it to open automatically, remember to go to general settings uh global settings general settings and then here you know 
at the chart book, so it'll open automatically when you open Sierra chart. So those are some of the basic things. Uh, so always keep that in mind. Uh, let's see what else. So I kind of uh, went ahead and already spoke about this. So like, let's see, this open. What happened to this? This chart is like all over the place for some reason. Is it this? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had just scroll up for some reason. Okay. So let's say, let's work on the chart settings real quick. Um, so when you go to charts, chart settings, um, I think I already explained these options here. Um, obviously, like I say, if you're on the daily, it's going to show your historical chart. So to make it easy, just go to like your five minutes and then go back to charts settings. So you could set up this thing. So this right here, um, if it's not set up on your time, obviously you have to set it up manually the first time for each chart. So like, it's not like if you set it up on this one, it's gonna come up on this chart also. It doesn't work like that. You have to set it up individually on each chart for some reason, okay? So five minutes. Um, just gonna let it load. Chart settings. So just change this. Uh, make sure your evening is set up correctly and low, low, low weekend data. Um, so here I have this set up to um, 4.15 because that's normally when this stops trading completely. So the closest at four, but you know, it's still trading uh, for another 15 minutes. And then here, instead of this, so the evening starts at 6, PM for us, so I'll put 18 to 9.29.59 of the next day. So exactly one second before of the next day, so I don't lose any data or miss any data. Um, on your advanced settings, um, I believe everything else is the same. I already explained to you about this part. Uh, and this right here, so that's so you can get the data for the exchange, the time zone. Um, then when you go to your advanced settings, two, that's as far as I've gone. I haven't really used this right here. Um, on your advanced settings two, this is a little bit more advanced, so it's for you to tag one chart with the other. So um, to link, I'm sorry, to link one chart with the other. So you see how here it says number one down here. And then it says number two on this other chart. Then you could link the charts, but you have to be careful because depending on what you have, like if you have this TPO chart right here and you decide that you want to link, let's say, um the a bar chart with that you don't want to do that because it's gonna mess up your whole tpo so i don't use it. i tried it once and i realized it messed it messed up my whole thing so i just don't use it so the only thing i have is to copy to copy the chart drawings so that's the only thing i use so you just if you want like let's say what i do is here like I mark, uh, let's say the previous week high and low. If I go on the weekly and mark the high and low, and then I go on the monthly and high and mark the high and low of the previous month. Um, and then on my TPO, I have it. I go to that chart and then I have 
to copy the joins from chart number three. So you see how it has this right here, the preview, preview, uh, previous week high, I'm sorry. And then this is the previous week low. The reason why I changed the color here is just to highlight it because that's the one I'm using. We're not even close to the lows of last week. So that's that. Um, what else? So that's about the settings. Um, okay, so when you you see the the tabs down here on the each chart, so if you right click one of them, there are a few things you could do here. So uh, you could rename the charts here, so you know exactly what each one of them is, what you have there. Um, you could duplicate the chart, so if you click there. It will duplicate right here. Uh, you right click, you can close it. I don't need it there, so I'm gonna close it. Um, if you right click and duplicate chart to chart book, so let's say for whatever reason you want to show uh, this uh, chart into this other chart book. So you see how I have a bunch of them. So my last one says weekly pro. So if I right click this one, duplicate chart to chart book, and then you choose wherever you want to send it. Uh, if you check, click the check mark here, switch to this chart book. So it's gonna, when you click OK, it's gonna send you, the screen is gonna change and it's gonna add that chart right there. I don't need it there, so I'm gonna close it. Yes. Um, so those are those options. Uh, let's see what else. Maximize, minimize, close, next. So that's just next. Just going to show you the next one. Um, so that's, I don't really use that. Um, so that's that. Um, closing chart books. So to close the chart books, so let's say um, you go to file, close chart book, or close all. Um, let's say for whatever reason, I come here and I say open, sorry, open chart book, and let's go to my desktop. I want to open this one. And then it's just going to open up here. Let's say I don't want it open anymore. So file, close chart book. Do you want to save it? Yes or no? Um, I didn't do any changes, so I'm just going to say yes. That's fine. So that's that. Then, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, the trade tab. Okay, so we went through the file. Let's see if I can show you any other things. Through the file here, um, the this is to open the DOM for this chart itself. So when you open a DOM for this, open trading DOM, you see it has the same um let me move it right here the same symbol as the chart right there so if you move away from this and then you want to trade using the dome for that particular symbol let's say like this one right here i have the the micro on this one but i want to trade the es so if you want to use the dome um I don't like having the dome floating like this, so um, I don't use it that way. So I'll show you later how how I use how I trade 
Um, but if you want to use your dome, let's say you have a bigger screen. Like if I had a bigger screen, obviously, yes, I'll have it uh, side by side or whatever. Um, but like I say, I have the micro on this chart and I want to trade the ES. So just want to make sure that that's what you're trading and it says it up there. Um, and if for whatever reason you want to change the symbol, you can go to chart settings and change the symbol here. Fine. And then it's going to open this up and then you just find your symbol that you want to trade with, um, with the dome. Um, going to close it. I'll go over how to change. You see how mine looks a little different than most likely most people when you first start using Sierra. So your dome looks a little different than this. Mine looks like this because I have it uh, customized a little bit. So yes, I want to close it. Um, open trading dome. So when you just click this one, it's just going to open this to find the symbol. I already have that there, open trading dome. So I click on the open chart, so I don't need the chart. Close that. And then the dome is always going to be floating like that. It's not going to be attached. Like you don't attach the dome, this one, to the Sierra charts. Um, there's other ways to use the dome. So I'll, like I said, I'll show you that after. So I'm going to close this right now. So I think that's it. Um, I don't really use this right here. Um, the time and sales window, so it's right there. Um, I don't really use that either. Um, the market depth window is also there. So edit I don't really use this much either um so charts we already went through the chart settings um graphic settings so when you go to chart and graphic settings here what this allows you to do is to change the colors and the font and the font color and size of each individual chart. So I have mine to use the global settings instead of each individual chart. So because I find it easier to just go through global settings and the graphic settings right here. And then you could just change everything there so that way you don't have to do it on each individual chart. So like your background, like if you wanna change your background to like, I don't know, blue, um, white. So it's sending you some of the letters you won't be able to see because I have them in white. Um, so I'm going to go back to black. That's obviously preference. If you want to use the grid, um, you just got to change the colors. Let's say you want it in white. And then this one, you got to do this too. White. Oh, not showing here. Uh, hold on, let me go to a different one. I have it set up here. I think on that one might be individual per chart itself. I haven't really used it up that much anyway. So two. Oh, one thing I did learn in uh, the Sierra Charts uh, help on their website. Um, whenever you're dealing with uh, lines or drawing, you want to set the line to dash and then uh, the style to whatever you want. So I'll show you that later as well. 
Anyway, I'm gonna take this off. Black. Like I had it. I don't really have a use for that, so just to show you. So you have all these other options. Just play with it. Um, that's pretty much what I did to to learn how to you know navigate this whole thing. Um, if I wanted to change something, I just pretty much click on one of these things and see what changed. Because sometimes they don't really like um, like you might not know exactly what it means. Like chart book tab color. Like, do you want, do you know which tab it is? Do you don't know what, uh, which tab it is? Do you just change the color? You know, I don't want to change it because then I'll have to memorize all these numbers to change it back. But, but um, you know, you could just change whatever. And then if you don't like it, just when you click on, on one of them, you change it, you don't like it, reset to default. And that's it. Um. Same thing with the fonts. I have all my fonts, or most of them. Um, yeah, because that one is regular. So I have most of my fonts. I tried them literally one by one to see if I like them. Um, and then I just changed them here. Select, type them manually, because obviously you don't have the option. The lowest is eight. Type to there if you want to change the color. And then hit OK and then apply um so you see like most most of my letters you see up here on the side here for the pricing at the bottom here for the tabs they're all small i just changed the whole thing um i think let's be control bar I think my contour value is the one that's, yeah, I left it at eight because six was too small. So that's for these things right up here. Um, so that that's for pretty much the look and feel um, for your charts in the whole application itself. Um, let's see. So just going through the chart um, options right here. So you have all these other different things. Um, I mean, this is like anything you just, you know, like Dalton says, when you're using profile, you got to, or when you're trading, you got to use your imagination. So just, you know, play around with this. Um, if you, if you don't like it, take it off. Like you put this right here let me see i don't know if it's gonna show but yeah so that's what i meant by the grid i guess i had to set it i had to turn it on here but if you don't want it just take it off you know just if you want to add certain things i don't like that take it off um it's just you know the time and sales window market there is also in the files like i show you here tab uh, this right here um, if you want to replay the let's say if you want to sim tray replaying the TPO for whatever date you could do it right here uh, chart and replay or you could go here this um, right here RPO that's what it means you replay the chart and this is gonna come up uh, if you want to pick a date, just got to click here, pick whatever date, set the time, and the speed. Uh, the speed that I normally use is 2. If you just want it to you know, move up, you have to pause it, change the speed, and play it again. Um, your best bet to... Um, sim trade with the replay if you want to sim trade um you have to use the trade window so i'll show you that the dome won't sync with this for some reason there is a way to sync it i tried it um i still didn't like it so i just used a trade window so i'm gonna show you how to set up the trade window uh right now um i'm gonna go through these two tabs after um 
I already told you about the global settings. Um, tool settings, so um, I'll show you that after also, since I have to talk about the tools and all this other stuff. So anyways, trade. What can you do here? Um, so you could open trade window for chart. So it's going to open the trade window floating. I don't like it like that. So I go to attach trade window to the chart. So I have my trade window on the left side. Then uh, trading chart DOM on. And then I have my chart DOM right here. You remember how I told you when you open the chart DOM right here? See? Oops, sorry. So it's just floating. So it has the tray window here and the dome here. But I don't like it floating. I don't have enough space to have it next to my chart. So I just use the um, tray window here and the dome here. Same thing. Now, I do know there are other things you could add to the DOM, but that's something I could explain later on. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to show you how I customized this right here um, and this one. The DOM is customized through the global settings in the graphic settings so if you scroll through here there are options for that so you see this the ask line which is the sell line and the beat line which is the buy line so green and red and then one second all right, so um, to change the colors for the <laughs> dumb columns here on the chart, like I say, global settings, general settings, and then you scroll down, it's gonna be all these options right here. Uh, the chart dumb by column lines, the background, um, the ones that says background is going to be for the DOM itself. Um, the line, so it's going to change these lines here. And so on and so forth. Um, so you have all these other options. So um, most of it is going to show on the actual DOM other than this right here. Um, highlight let's see so this um is it's gonna show so let's say if you're up on your trade it's just changing the colors if you're up it's gonna show that it's gonna show green if it's red it's gonna show i mean if it's down it's gonna show uh red um, and then this right here, I believe this is the one that changes the color of the letters. Let's see. Nope, not on this one. Uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, it's just a matter of playing with this. Um, that's pretty much what I did. I just tried all of them one by one. And whatever I didn't like, like I say, reset to default and just keep trying the other things. So, all right, I'm gonna move on to how do I customize this right here, the trade window. So you see here that I have these two options turned off, like I can't click on it, but 
I could click on the rest of the other ones. So, um, pretty much you go to trade in chart trade settings. So, here you could change the text size for this. Um, there are a few different things you could do here. Obviously, most of these things are based on preference. Um, this part down here um, is what I have enable and disable. So, this is a personal preference. So, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to do it. But I like to have it this way because I get failed instantly. Either live, if I'm trading live, or sim trading. As soon as I hit the buy or the sell button, it fills me right away. So there is an, an upside to it, which is that you get filled right away. The downside is that you could be down a tick. Um, as soon as you um, uh, get into the trade. So again, that's based on preference. It doesn't always happen, but it does happen sometimes. I'd rather get filled right away than sit and wait for, you know, a, a tick to be hit or whatever. So I just get my orders filled. Um, I have this cancel old also disabled. Um, and this part right here. So if you don't want to see your PNL, um, you could turn this off. So this one is gonna show on the lines when you place an order. It shows the lines of your where your entry is, and if you have a stop, it will show the stop line. And then if you're positive or negative on your trade is gonna show on the same line on the same line of uh, your entry uh, price so that's pretty much what it is so display average price obviously if you if you're trying to average down or average up for whatever reason which I don't recommend then it's gonna show your average price there um, what else? Um, this also you could turn it off right here if you don't want to see your PL there on your uh, try uh, here on your trade uh, chart or your DOM. And I think that's about it for this. Um, this right here means break even. So if you are in a position and you want to use this so that's what that's there for uh flatten so if you're in a position and you just want to get out of everything so whether you're negative or positive it's just going to take you out and close everything so if you have like let's say you got your entry here and your stop down here and your target up here once you hit flatten it's just gonna close everything obviously reverse just mean closes the current trade and reverses it so if you're long it's just gonna close it and make you short so obviously whether you're in profit or not whatever it is um obviously here is how many contracts you want to buy i normally use one or two um since i'm starting right now i always use limit orders there's a bunch of other things here you could use i just use limit orders for everything um, and that's the main reason why I use the buy and sell order so I get filled right away. Um, this M is the menu for the trade window. Um, and you have all these different options right here. Um, short trade mode on. So this, you remember this part right here, when you right click on the chart, it shows you this. I don't really use it. I have it on. So, see, when you right click, it went away. So, I don't really have a need for that. So, I guess I could leave it off for, for now. Um, 
and there's these other options tray simulation on so I have the same on and uh, the tray window which is attached um, only orders from chart so the only orders that are gonna go through are for this chart itself um, use attached orders so I have this on I'll show you how that works so that's this right here use attached orders so how does this work to so set up the attached orders I'm sorry before I go to that let's see what else I have here you have all these other settings you could change also orders confirmation um, I have a lot of this turned off. This you could, is so just to turn on which confirmation you want to get. Um, so I I haven't turned off. I don't really need them because I can see right away on the chart what's going on. Um, so to go back to use the attach orders. So you have to go here to targets, and you set it up right here. You may. All right, so I'm um, setting up the targets. So I have here a target. Let's say I want to, when I get in my uh, trade, I want to get, um, let's say, two handles out of it. So let's say you have set up here for two contracts and then wherever your entry is you want to get two handles out of that uh, trade so that's my target and I have it set as a limit order and then let's say you want to add a stop so if you want to add anything else just click add and then um, edit it so here um, I have a five ticks, five ticks, stop, um, stop limit order, and then here, five ticks. Um, I haven't changed anything else. Uh, this is just a different um, set of orders that you have. Your quantity tool, you could have that also set up for how many, but just two. It's saying it didn't match because I have a click here and I don't have a, you know, three contracts or whatever, though you could add that. So I could, I, I don't remember how to do it, but I know you could change this and add more like one, two, three, six, nine, whatever. Um, So that's about it for that. And then, you know, if you want to place an order, um, let's say you want to short this right here, click sell. So it'll show you that's your stop right here. You see how we change? It's already telling you that you're down 50. So it's going to show you your stop here. That's your entry. And this is your target. And you know, it's red because it's down already one handle. So I'm gonna flatten this to close everything, and then there we go down one handle already. Um, what else? So that's the target. I haven't really used this um, here, I tried once, but I don't remember what it was. Oh. Yeah, that's where it is. This is where you change the button. So you see how you have six. So you could change this to instead of four, three, and then when you go back, it's going to show one, two, three. That's what it was. Uh, Max Chase for Chase Limit Orders. So. And that's about it. Uh, this is like a smaller version of the same screen. 
Um, yeah, that's for to choose what you want to do with those buttons for the flat and then cancel. Um, and that's about it for this. For uh, these other options on the trade tab up here, um, general trade settings, I haven't changed any of this. So if you want alert sounds when you place orders or cancel order, so you could set that up here. Um, but that's pretty much what it is. Um, this is your scaling, how it's gonna work. Um, so that's that. Um, then you have the chart trace settings. We already went through this. Then you have your chart DOM settings. So this, um, yours might be a little different. I copied this from JJ's uh, screen once because mine was a little bit out of whack. So if you want to, you know, post this and then make sure your our settings are set up this way. That way, uh, when you have a limit order or stop order, the order goes through because that was the issue some of us were having. We will place a limit order and it wouldn't go through or um, it will go as a market order or something like that. So we set it up like JJ so that way we don't have any issues um, uh, with the orders. Then to customize your DOM, okay, let me open that real quick. So you have that option here also. Uh, so if you want to add, you see how I only have three things. So if you want to add any other things here, um, you could do that. So, and then hit apply. So you're going to see all those other things show up there. Uh, you can move it around. So if you want to keep the bid and the ask price together. So they will show there like that or show on this left side instead. It'll show like that as well. Well, there it goes. We're about to close the gap. I guess some tweet or some news came out. So that's pretty much how you set up the um or change the columns on the dome. Then so you can show your PNL. There's a bunch of different things here. Let's see. Then you could go to uh, chart DOM settings. I already talked about that. Um, your keyboard shortcuts ID work on that. So I have it. So you could, if you want to use your keyboard, you could just click on this. Um, I have to find where you changed. I really don't remember. I think it's somewhere in the global settings. Let's see what else. 